2024 promises to be a record-breaking year for spaceflight, but well, I guess that kind of sounds cliche now, doesn't it? I mean, every single year seems to be a record-breaking year these days. We're in this brand new era of records being broken left, right, and center, and with tons of launches and tons of landings, tons of science, and well, plenty of other cool things. So can 2024 really be any better? Well, let's see what's coming up this year in spaceflight. To find out what's going on in 2024, we also kind of need to take a look back, just a bit. And that's because, while it is true that generally the trend in recent years is that each has been more and more packed than those before it, you know, the whole groundbreaking year cliche, it's not always the case when we look at things on a more individual basis. For example, let's take a look at Europe. Believe it or not, in 2023, we only saw three launches from European rockets, two from Ariane 5 and one from Vega. Not only that, but those Ariane 5 launches were the last few for this rocket. The European Space Agency, or ESA, and Ariane Group were hoping to debut their Ariane 6 rocket, but it wasn't possible before the year ended, so this debut was moved into 2024. We did, however, see the rocket completing its final testing in 2023, and the debut of Ariane 6 is now expected to occur sometime between June 15th and July 31st of this year. Vega C was also supposed to return to flight in 2023, but there were two problems. On one hand, they realized that they needed more time to complete the investigation from its last failure, and on the other hand, there was also a test stand failure in June of 2023 that added more fuel to the fire. All of this combined meant that a number of missions are now launching on Falcon rockets rather than on European rockets. So in short, it wasn't really the best year for the European spaceflight sector overall, but as they say, if life gives you lemons, go make some lemonade. So in 2023, we saw ESA opening up to more commercial cooperation for the near future. The agency started up a new program for commercial cargo transportation to the ISS, and another one for commercial procurement of launches as well. Now this wasn't solely because the traditional launch companies in Europe have had a string of bad luck, but also because in recent years, Europe has seen a surge of private companies also developing new rockets. For example, in 2023, we saw German company rocket factory Augsburg completing qualification testing of the second stage of its RFA-1 rocket and Helix engine. This rocket will be ready to go to the launch pad soon this year, with a second launch planned towards the end of 2024. This rocket also planned to be among the first to launch from Saxivord, a newly built commercial spaceport located in Scotland that allows access to polar orbits. RFA also proposed its own cargo transport vehicle called Argo for ESA's new commercial transportation program. This vehicle will have the capacity to send and also return up to four metric tons of cargo to and from the ISS. Also, yes, your ears do not deceive you, the cargo vehicle is called Argo. I guess they needed a pun token for that. Other companies that have submitted proposals to ESA for this program are the Exploration Company with its Nix spacecraft and Ariane Group, who proposed its Suzy spacecraft for commercial cargo transportation as well. Definitely a lot of interesting stuff coming up for the next few years. But RFA isn't the only one hoping to launch for the first time in 2024. There are a number of other European companies developing rockets set to hit the launch pad really soon, though hopefully not in the literal sense. In Germany is ESAR Aerospace, who's hoping to launch its Spectrum rocket from the Andoya Space Center in Norway. The company teased the completion of the first Spectrum rocket on social media at the end of 2023, so we may not be that far away from seeing it on the launch pad. We also have Orbex from the UK, hoping to launch its Prime rocket, also from the new spaceport in Sutherland, Scotland. The company has made great progress in 2023 to complete the development of this rocket, so 2024 may be the year that it finally launches. And then, Spanish company PLD Space is also hoping to develop its larger Miura 5 rocket after the successful launch last year of its Miura 1 rocket, a suborbital demonstrator for Miura 5. While it won't launch in 2024, we should expect to see engine development and structures being built during the year, as well as the construction of a new launch pad for it at the Guiana Space Center. And the list just goes on and on. There are some companies developing their own suborbital demonstrator vehicles, others creating new rocket engines, and even others developing their own satellites. So it's safe to say that there hasn't been this much activity in the European spaceflight industry in a long, long time. Probably ever. 
And coming back to Ariane Group and Avio, even though their 2023 was not ideal, if all goes well, 2024 will see the debut of Ariane 6 and the return to flight of Vega C. Overall, there's a good chance that 2024 will be a lot better for Europe than 2023, with even more launches, more new rockets, more launch pads, more testing, uh, basically the full house. But what about, say, China? China launched a remarkable number of times in 2023. 67 missions took place from there, three more than in 2022, and they took over the number two spot on the worldwide count of launches. However, there weren't really as many missions that were quite as attention-grabbing as some that came from, for example, India, one of its neighboring countries, but we'll talk about them later. Now, most of these launches were dedicated to more of the same, so to speak. More reconnaissance satellites, more weather satellites, etc. Although it is noteworthy that in 2023, the country completed its second year of continued operations of its Tiangong space station. Keeping this orbital outpost continuously inhabited and operated is no small feat. Besides all of that, the only Chinese mission that gathered a lot of attention this year was the second flight of the Zuke-2 rocket. Now, this flight made Zuke-2 the first Methalox rocket to successfully reach orbit, beating Relativity's Terran-1 and SpaceX's Starship. This rocket later launched again in December, finally carrying payloads into orbit, another achievement knocked off the list, before even wrapping up the year. But that was about it for the big ones from China, and it wasn't even a government agency who accomplished it. It was actually a private company called Landspace. In fact, this same company is now preparing to build a much larger, partially reusable rocket called Zuke-3. Now, a prototype of this rocket is expected to start its hop test very soon, and the company hopes to debut the full rocket next year. In 2023, we also saw another Chinese private company hop a Methalox reusable rocket prototype, not once, but twice. This was iSpace's Hyperbola 2 test vehicle, which aims to prove the technologies needed for the company's much larger Hyperbola 3 vehicle, so we should expect more tests of this prototype during this year. Another Chinese private company, Galactic Energy, was also able to launch its Series 1 rocket seven times, despite suffering one launch failure among them. Even more launches of this rocket are expected to come up in 2024, and the company is also aiming to debut its larger Pallas 1 rocket during this year as well. In more rocket debuts, at the start of the year we also just had the debut of Orion Space's Gravity 1 all-solid propellant rocket. This rocket, with a performance of 6.5 tons to orbit, has now become China's most capable, privately developed rocket. But that title may not hold for long. In 2023, space pioneers Tianlong-2 became the first privately developed liquid-fueled rocket that had no previous direct heritage to successfully go into orbit on its first attempt. And in 2024, the company is aiming to launch the much larger Tianlong-3 rocket for the first time around the middle of the year. Once flown, Tianlong-3 will be the largest Chinese privately developed rocket with a capacity of up to 14 metric tons to low Earth orbit. So we could say that, at least in 2023, most of the interesting stuff coming out of China actually happened from private companies rather than government agencies. And in 2024, there's going to be a lot more activity from them as well. We did see some major news about the state-owned side of the Chinese spaceflight industry too, but the stories that made the news were kind of along the lines of this Starship copy proposal for an evolution of the Chongzheng 9 rocket. This vehicle is slated to be used for the Chinese government's hopes to build a base on the moon during the 2030s, with plans to first launch it as an expendable vehicle, and then later as a reusable vehicle, and, well, they have this Starshipified version of the rocket as an example. More recently, we had a test stand explosion at the Zhouchen Satellite Launch Center, which we were able to spot thanks to satellite pictures. These showed that an explosion had occurred at the test stand where Kuaizhou solid rocket motors were tested. These are produced by a state-owned company called Xpace. So after all of this, it's easy to think that maybe 2024 may just be more of the same for them. But that's probably not going to be the case. This year, we'll see the launch of the Chang'e 6 mission, which will be a lunar sample return mission just like Chang'e 5, but the difference being that this time it'll land on the far side of the moon. That'll be the first time that any spacecraft tries to return samples from that side of the moon. This also means that we'll see the launch of another Chiachao relay satellite to communicate with these missions, since there's no direct line of contact with Earth. This year, we'll also see two science missions from Chinese and European partnerships, both of them being X-ray observatories. 
The first one, the Einstein probe, has already launched at the start of the year, and it comes as a collaboration between the Chinese Academy of Sciences and the European Space Agency. The second X-ray observatory is the Space Variable Objects Monitor, or SVOM, which is planned to launch in the spring and comes as a collaboration between the China National Space Administration, the Chinese Academy of Sciences, and CNES, the French Space Agency. China had also planned to launch in 2024 its Shuntian Space Telescope, but sadly, its launch has been delayed to 2025. But at least we can hope to see some progress on this mission in 2024. This year also promises to be the first that China may start to launch its very own version of Starlink. Test launches for these have already occurred in the past few years, and 2024 is the year that operational deployment is expected to occur. While there are a number of other companies around the world trying to make low-Earth orbit satellite constellations like Starlink, those in the Western Hemisphere have preferred to go with a traditional box-shaped satellite instead of the flat-pack design that we see on Starlink. This flat-pack design is, after all, what allows SpaceX to launch so many of them at a time, and it maximizes the number of satellites that a rocket can carry. Well, that's something that we may see from some of these upcoming Chinese competitors to Starlink, as a few of them have already tested out flat-pack designs in 2023 and may very well launch operational satellites this year. It looks like 2024 will be much more interesting in China than 2023, so we'll definitely be keeping an eye on them. And another country to keep an eye on actually is India, which had its best year in spaceflight ever in 2023. So the question remains, can 2024 be even better? Well, unless something really unexpected happens, 2024 should be a very active year for India's human spaceflight program. In 2023, we saw the country perform an in-flight abort test of its Gaganyaan capsule. This test proved that the capsule's escape system works as intended during the period of maximum aerodynamic pressure on the vehicle. In 2024, two more of these are expected to be performed to test the system in different conditions. Furthermore, Gaganyaan will begin its first on-orbit test with two uncrewed missions in 2024. The first is set to occur in February, while the second is expected to occur over the summer. With all these tests completed by the end of the year, India should have a pretty proven system to fly its own astronauts into orbit. That crewed flight won't be in 2024, though. It's currently planned for the first half of 2025, but we'll definitely see them warming up to that over the year, paving the way for a few more challenging missions. In 2023, India declared its intentions to build a space station in low Earth orbit by the middle of the 2030s and to land a human on the moon by 2040. These ambitious goals will be realized by launching robotic lunar missions, and in 2023, India made another big leap in that direction. Last year was the year that India entered the books as the fourth country to successfully soft land a spacecraft on the surface of the moon. The country's Chandrayaan-3 mission launched in the summer of 2023, and it was not only able to land on the moon, but also deployed the Pragyan rover. Towards the end of the mission, the lander also performed a small hop on the moon to prove that the technology used could eventually support a lunar sample return mission. With Chandrayaan-3 now completed, India is indeed now preparing for a lunar sample return mission called Chandrayaan-4, set to occur no earlier than 2026. In 2024, India is also set to launch the Mangalyaan-2 mission, which will become the second mission by India to Mars. This mission will feature another Mars orbiter, just like Mangalyaan-1, but with a much better spacecraft and science payloads on board. But of course, the big achiever, the one with the most records in 2023, was SpaceX. So here it's even more fair to ask whether 2024 can be even better. I mean, look at all the stuff they did this past year. They had 96 Falcon launches, five of them with Falcon Heavy, by the way. They've crushed record turnaround times on all three Falcon launch pads. They've accelerated the processing of boosters and drone ships after recovery. And we also saw boosters going up to 19 flights, which is another record, by the way. Rest in pieces, B-1058. We had the most mass launched into orbit by any entity in a given year with over 1,000 tons in orbit. And they launched the most number of Starlink satellites in a given year with 1,984 of them launched in 2023. And they did all this while debuting a new version of Starlink. Then on top of that, SpaceX launched the world's largest and most powerful rocket ever created, and they did it twice! 
And that was just a summary. We could go on and on and on about all of the details about how they were able to do all that and all the records they broke and everything like that. But then this video would probably take till tomorrow and you'd still be watching here. So really the best way to keep up with all of that activity is to subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell. So you'll be notified whenever we go live for a launch at the Cape or a test at Starbase. We also have This Week in Spaceflight episodes every Friday and Starbase update episodes every Monday, so you can get your weekly recap of all things space. Now how can this be even better in 2024? Well, let's start with the number of launches. SpaceX was targeting 100 launches with the Falcon rocket family in 2023, and they almost achieved it with 96 launches. But this year, SpaceX is planning to bump that number up to 144 flights, which is essentially an average of 12 flights per month. To achieve this, the company will once again try to crush the turnaround times at each launch pad and optimize booster recovery. Keiko Donchev, SpaceX's vice president of launch, recently pointed out, quote, the launch system, pads recovery flight hardware, needs to be capable of 13 per month so we can play catch up when planned maintenance, debacles, and weather inevitably slow us down. That means an increase of about 30% from the current cadence. So that's gonna take a good amount of work by SpaceX's teams to prepare for that. In addition to that optimization work, SpaceX will also need to greatly increase their rate of Falcon second stage production. Remember, that second stage and its MVAC engine is always expendable on every flight. So 144 launches means 144 second stages that need to be produced, and that's an average of one second stage being produced every two and a half days, each one with its corresponding MVAC engine. In fact, John Edwards, SpaceX's vice president of Falcon launch vehicles, mentioned this as a challenge for 2024, saying, quote, Main thing right now is to accelerate our supply chain and get our production rate up so we are consistently shipping a second stage in MVAC every 2.5 days. It only takes one late part to delay a mission. This increased second stage manufacturing also translates into an even greater amount of testing needed at McGregor as a result. There, each MVAC engine is test-fired individually, then sent to Hawthorne for integration with its second stage, then sent back to McGregor to be fired up again once integrated with that second stage. Already in 2023, we saw almost 100 tests of the MVAC integrated with the second stage, and almost 120 tests of the MVAC engine alone. So this will have to increase again in 2024, and if you want to keep an eye on that, you can head over to our McGregor 24-7 livestream, as you'll probably have a test of these guaranteed each day. In 2024, SpaceX will also be busy starting work on its fourth Falcon launch pad that the company leased just last year. Around the middle of 2023, the US Space Force announced that it had granted the lease of Space Launch Complex 6 to SpaceX, which will enable an increase in cadence from the West Coast. SpaceX doesn't expect to launch a Falcon 9 from Slick 6 until mid-2025, but we may very well see a bit of action to build up to this launch pad during the year. Now this higher cadence is not for nothing. With it, the company will be able to launch even more Starlink satellites in 2024 than last year. This will enable SpaceX to add more capacity in orbit and provide more Starlink internet service to even more people. In 2023, the customer base grew beyond 2 million people, and SpaceX officials mentioned the project was starting to generate a sizable amount of revenue. In 2024, not only will SpaceX be able to launch more Starlink satellites with the increased cadence, but they'll also be debuting a new version of Starlink that can directly connect to cell phones. Now, for those who have been following SpaceX for a while now, this may not come as a surprise. Documentation from all the way back in 2020 already hinted at SpaceX wanting to add this capability to Starlink. And in August of 2022, the company formally announced a partnership with T-Mobile to deliver this internet service directly to phones. The first SpaceX launch of 2024 already launched the first six of these direct-to-sell Starlinks, and the company plans to roll out an additional 840 satellites to support this effort. Of course, this service is only meant to be used in remote areas where cell service is not already available, which actually is the case in much of the US due to the demographic distribution. At first, these direct-to-sell satellites should be able to provide enough bandwidth to enable text messaging, with voice and data connectivity coming online as more and more satellites are added into orbit later. But the increased cadence of launches will not only be serving Starlink launches, believe it or not, SpaceX launches customer missions too. In fact, in 2023, they launched 33 customer missions, more than all of the customer missions served by Western launch companies combined. These customer missions were almost split half and half between commercial companies and governments. And yes, that's governments in plural. 
As we mentioned before when talking about Europe, a number of European government missions have moved to Falcon, and that meant that a Falcon 9 launched, for example, ESA's Euclid Space Telescope this past year. This will be repeated next year, with Falcon 9 set to launch two ESA science missions, EarthCare and HERA. On top of that, the European Union is in the process of approving the launch of four Galileo Global Navigation satellites to be flown on two different Falcon 9 missions during 2024. In general, the customer manifest for the year is pretty jam-packed, with somewhere between 40 and 50 missions potentially being dedicated to customers in 2024. But yes, I know, for the Starship-loving fans, this is just more of the same. We know you guys very well, and you are waiting for the big shiny rocket to fly once again this year. And trust me, we are all in the same boat with you here at NSF. 2023 was the year Starship finally launched, and it was amazing! Okay, maybe, maybe that wasn't so amazing. Let's go to the second flight. There you go, that's better. Look at those 33 engines firing and the mega mock diamonds produced by them. Well, who doesn't want to see more of that in 2024? I do. And it certainly looks like we're going to have a lot more of those if everything goes well. Ship 28 and Booster 10 have completed standalone testing, and SpaceX's Jessica Jensen recently confirmed the integrated launch of these vehicles could happen as soon as February. After that, it'll just be a matter of how well this third and subsequent flights go that'll determine what the cadence of flights will look like. The better the flights go, the fewer things SpaceX will need to go through in terms of hardware and paperwork, and the more flights we might see. But on the other hand, we also have lots of actions running parallel to that to modify the launch pad systems, the testing regime, the production, well, the whole lot. For example, the orbital tank farm at Starbase is getting a complete makeover as we speak, with new tanks being set to be added soon and old unused tanks being removed from it. Sections for a new launch tower are also arriving at Starbase, and we've had comments from SpaceX's Kathy Leaders and also from Elon that the second tower will be going up this year. This will enable the company to increase launch cadence, but also, as Elon pointed out, teams will be able to upgrade one tower while the other is launching. We're going to be upgrading one tower while we launch from another tower, so two towers is important. But the launch pad isn't the only thing seeing upgrades. The whole production site is seeing an upgrade and extension, and SpaceX is also developing an upgraded version of Starship, dubbed Starship Version 2. In fact, we may have seen parts of it already around the production site at Starbase. Elon recently even hinted at a version 3 coming down the line later, which would be much larger and even more capable, although it's not clear when that will come. So yeah, if you're looking for action this year, SpaceX is probably going to be very, very busy. But wait, there's more! There's a number of other companies in the US that are also planning to do a bunch of stuff over the next year. Just look at Rocket Lab, for instance. They want to launch 22 times in 2024. That's a ton compared to anyone else in the Western Hemisphere that isn't SpaceX. Despite having a launch failure in September, Electron was, for another year, the second most launched rocket for any US company. Rocket Lab also flew for the first time from Virginia and debuted its Haste program, where Electron launches on suborbital trajectories to deploy payloads into a hypersonic re-entry trajectory. Oh, and the company also reused its first Rutherford engine and tested out the second stage tanks for its upcoming Neutron rocket, which also changed its design again. So increasing launch cadence this year will be a bit complicated, but we'll have to see if they pull it off while also doing all of the other stuff that they're already working on. It's quite a lot. On the other hand, we have companies that will sadly no longer be flying again, like Virgin Orbit, which went bankrupt in April and had its assets auctioned off to other companies in May. In fact, Rocket Lab's newest engine manufacturing facility is now located in the very same building where Virgin Orbit's headquarters were located. Safe to say, they are never going to be launching again. But then there's Terran 1, another rocket that flew once in 2023 and won't fly again, but in this case, it's because Relativity Space, the company that built it, is retiring it to focus on developing its much, much larger Terran R rocket. This seems to have paid off for them, with the company firing up the large Eon-R engine before the end of 2023. Now, while we're not expecting any launch from Relativity in 2024, we are looking forward to more blue Methalox fire coming out from their Eon-R engine. And speaking of blue Methalox fire, in 2024, we finally had the debut flight of ULA's Vulcan rocket. After all the years of waiting and delays, the rocket successfully completed its first mission very early into the year with a lot more to come. Its second flight, 
currently planned for April, will carry the first Dream Chaser space plane to the International Space Station. And yes, that's another thing to add to the long list of new stuff coming up in 2024. Once Vulcan's first two flights are off the ground, the rocket will be able to go through certification to fly payloads for the U.S. Space Force, and ULA hopes Vulcan's first national security mission can happen in the second half of the year, with up to six total Vulcan launches planned for 2024. ULA's Atlas V rocket will also be busy, as it will start flying operational Kuiper satellites around that time, after having completed a prototype flight in 2023. Boeing Starliner may also start flying crew this year on top of Atlas V after quite a few delays, and the Delta IV Heavy rocket will be retired with its final launch currently being targeted for March. Safe to say ULA will be busy in 2024 compared to last year. Another Methalox rocket that may debut in 2024 is Blue Origin's New Glenn rocket, although it may be a bit tight to achieve this. The company is aiming to launch this rocket towards the end of the year with NASA's Escapade mission, and we've seen quite a lot of hardware for New Glenn. In fact, recently, we saw the company moving a full-scale booster to the launch pad that, while not configured for a launch, looks complete enough to be able to undergo loading of cryogenic fluids. The company also has a set of fairing halves and a second stage of the launch pad, so it wouldn't be that weird if we saw the rocket fully stacked for ground testing in the coming months. But you know how these things tend to go in spaceflight. Delays can still happen, and it wouldn't be a big surprise if it didn't debut in 2024 after all. But it's probably safe to say, knock on wood, we're going to see a lot more activity for this rocket in the coming year. In 2024, we were also supposed to see the next launch of the SLS rocket for the Artemis II mission. However, we are adjusting our schedule to target Artemis II for September of 2025. But this year we'll certainly see a lot more progress for it. The boosters are at the Kennedy Space Center, Orion is undergoing final integration work with its service module, and the core stage is about to get shipped to the launch site soon. All of these elements should be coming together over the coming year to ready the second SLS rocket for pre-flight tests for what will be the first crewed mission to the moon since 1972. But then on the other hand, we've got Russia which in 2023 tried to land a robotic lander on the moon with the Luna 25 mission and it crashed. And not even during the landing attempt, but rather during an orbit lowering burn. The spacecraft overshot the burn and essentially deorbited itself and crashed against the surface of the moon. We also saw a Soyuz spacecraft having to launch uncrewed to replace another Soyuz in orbit, something that hadn't happened since 1979. This was the launch of the Soyuz MS-23 spacecraft that replaced the Soyuz MS-22 due to a leak on the spacecraft's coolant system that had occurred in late 2022. That was not the only leak of a coolant from a Russian spacecraft though, as days before the launch of Soyuz MS-23, the Progress MS-21 spacecraft also developed a similar coolant leak. Then, more recently, in October, a backup radiator that had been installed on Naoka during the summer also developed a leak. So what's up for Russia in 2024? Well, one big thing that was missing from 2023 was any sort of launch of the Angara rocket. 2024 may see more of this rocket, as it's set to launch potentially up to three times, and for the first time, it'll do so from the Vostochny Cosmodrome, Russia's easternmost launch site. Other than that, it pretty much seems like it'll be more of the same for Russia in 2024. Otherwise, there will be a bunch of other folks in 2024 putting more rockets in space and ramping up their cadence. For example, in 2023, we had the debut of Japan's H-3 rocket, but sadly, that was not successful. A second launch attempt is now scheduled for February, and if successful, it'll pave the way later in the year for the debut launch of Japan's HTV-X spacecraft, the country's next-generation cargo spacecraft to the ISS. In 2023, we also saw Japanese private company iSpace attempt a landing on the moon with its first Hakuto R lander. While the landing was not successful, it came very close to being a success, and the company is preparing for a second Hakuto R mission in 2024. Japan also launched another lander in 2023 called SLIM that should be making its lunar landing attempt later this month. So that's two for two for the number of lunar landings that'll be attempted by this country in 2024. In 2023, we also had surprise launches from Iran, North Korea, and South Korea. All three countries each debuted a new rocket, with Iran and South Korea's new launcher succeeding on their first try, and North Korea's taking at least three attempts until it finally worked. More launches of these new rockets could happen in 2024, as each of the country's governments have already said that they're wanting to use these rockets more often in the next few years. 
In 2024, we may also see completely new countries developing their own orbital launchers. For example, Gilmore Space Technologies, a private launch company from Australia, is aiming to launch its Eris rocket in the next few weeks. And if successful, it would make Gilmore the first Australian private company to reach orbit. But launches are just that. Launches. And most of the time, there's some really cool stuff going up with the payload on top that's sometimes even more important than the launch itself. And yes, I am referring to the amazing science missions going on that have done and will do a ton of fascinating stuff this year. In 2023, we had a ton of new discoveries from the James Webb Space Telescope, and 2024 won't be any different as the telescope finishes its second year of observations and its third year begins. In 2023, we also had the launch of the Euclid Space Telescope, and its first observations have already been published. This telescope will continue observations over the next five years, with more data releases expected in 2025, 2027, and 2029. In the meantime, it'll be gathering all that juicy data that will give us a lot more information about the dark energy and dark matter of our universe. Another thing to look out for, not just in 2024, but in subsequent years, is the study of the samples that OSIRIS-REx returned from asteroid Bennu in 2023. Last year, we also had the flyby of Mercury by the Bepi Colombo spacecraft, and this will be repeated again in 2024 with two flybys of Mercury expected to occur in September and December of this year. NASA's Juno mission completed two flybys of Io in 2023, and another one is expected in the coming weeks. NASA's Parker Solar Probe will also perform its last planned flyby of Venus, which will further tweak its orbit, coming even closer to the Sun than ever before. And speaking of missions continuing into 2024, we'll see another year of operations for curiosity, perseverance, and ingenuity. Yes, the little Martian helicopter is still flying on Mars and has already done so over 70 times. At this rate, it wouldn't be surprising if it surpasses its 100th flight in 2024. In 2024, we'll also have ESA's Hera spacecraft heading to Didymos and Dimorphos to investigate the aftermath of the impact of the DART spacecraft in 2022. Europa Clipper will also finally launch, which will see a Falcon Heavy being pushed to its absolute limits of performance as it needs to push this six-ton space probe into deep space. After a long trip out to Jupiter, the spacecraft will be orbiting the giant planet, performing frequent passes of Europa to study the moon in detail. We'll also have a few more missions, but instead studying Earth, with ESA's Earth Care mission, NASA's PACE mission, and the joint NISAR project between NASA and the Indian Space Agency. And speaking of India, its Aditya L1 Solar Observatory successfully reached the Sun-Earth Lagrange Point 1 at the beginning of the year. India also started its year with the launch of the X-ray Observatory ExpoSat, and as we previously mentioned in the video, two more X-ray observatories are expected to go up from China in 2024 with joint collaborations with the European Space Agency and the French Space Agency. So as you can see from this video, there is a ton of cool stuff coming up in 2024. If all goes well, it'll definitely be another record-breaking year across the board. Sure, every company faces some bad luck here and there, but at the end of the day, what counts is their success overall. So cheers to 2024. Let's all enjoy this amazing time that we live in, and we hope to see you following right along with us. For NSF, I'm Alicia Siegel, looking forward to this year in spaceflight.